design for manufacturing is the difference between if you're a hardware company, making money and going out of business, okay? So uh, typically, like, your margin is going to be, what, like 30% to 50% if you're really, really good, right? Okay, now if you imagine sort of this bell curve here, right, which is a, a, an example of, like, where your parametrics are falling and everything is different, right? If you have sort of like a fail pass curve like this where about 40% of your stuff is failing and 60% is passing, guess what happens to your margin? I had a 30% margin, but 40% of my stuff is failing. You're losing money, right? Uh, and you really want to push that out so you're like 99% passing. And the problem is that when you're in the lab and you're testing your stuff, you're, you're only getting one sample or two samples of your product, right? And so just saying it worked on the bench, great, you know, it's going to work in production is not good enough. You have to think about it proactively and try to think about where am I going to fail? Where are my parametrics going to go wrong? So a, a simple sort of example, let's go back to uh, the example of the bike flasher, right? The bike flasher has three LEDs in it, let's just say. And I'm going to set the LEDs brightness with a resistor, which is what everyone does. It's not a bad idea, but what happens when you use a resi resistor? Ah, I'm going to use a 1% resistor because I really care about the lights to be very uniform, right? That should be good enough, except that LEDs have a 20% variation in forward voltage. That is a fact of physics. You can buy binned ones, but they're much more expensive, right? And if you have a 20% variation in le LED forward voltage, you will have a 40% variation in the amount of current going through. You can do the math. And that amount of current going through is directly related to how bright your LED is. So now you have three LEDs, all of them with 1% resistors, and one's a lot brighter than the other. And when you were doing this on the bench, and you designed it in small production, it looked great because all your LEDs came from the same lot. They had the same VF characteristic. But when you go to production, you're now mixing huge lots of material together that you're starting to see more of the corners. And you're like, oh, well, you know, what's going on here? Let's just yield those out. We'll just go, go ahead and throw those away that aren't you know, the ones that we can't ship to customers because it's going to be a bad experience for them. I don't want to have this bad impression on the outgo. You know, people are going to just say bad things and we're going to yield it out, right? Um, let's say you have a 20% failure rate and your cost of goods is 10 bucks, okay? Effectively throwing away those units increases your net cost per saleable unit to $12.50 per unit. That's, you have to buy $12.50 worth of material to get the units you need to fulfill to your customers, right? And so for, uh, you know, for using this one real resistor part, it actually turns into a very expensive mistake. On the other hand, if you knew that you really want your LEDs to be uniform in brightness, you'd say, OK, what is the core parameter that controls brightness? The amount of current through an LED. Not the voltage, the amount of current. OK, how do I control the amount of current? I use a current regulator. How much is that going to cost? It's going to cost a buck, right? A dollar versus a penny, right? A hundred times more expensive to go ahead and control that current. But it turns out that if you use that $1 converter and it controls your parametrics so that your failure rate goes down to 1%, you've, increased, you've improved your bottom line net by $1.38 at the end of the day, right? You're not throwing away so much material to go ahead and ship the stuff out that you want to ship. So as you go through your product, right, it's very important for you to think about sort of what are the key parametrics that you think can affect your product. There's a lot of things that don't matter at all. And, and as engineers, we try to design things to be foolproof and easy to use, but there's always something that's going to make your product a little special, a little bit more different, the thing that you really care about in terms of quality. And that design for manufacturing is what's going to really drive the difference between shipping a quality product out that feels really good, that has a tight experience, versus you sort of making these agonizing decisions about, well, do I throw away a bunch of product or just kind of ship them and hope the customer doesn't notice? Right, the quality issue or whatever it is, and so you know, I I encourage everyone to have a, th a think about that before they go to production.